Let's start this video with a little bit of magic. Here's a good old fashioned five pound note. I could do this trick with any denomination of banknote, but well, I do work in the charity sector, so I'm not made of money. Anyway, if I just fold this five in two like that, it magically turns in to a 10 pound note. Wouldn't our lives as fundraisers be a lot easier if we could just do this every day? Anyway, there is another magic trick I can do, but this time with your ears. What if I said to you that I could play a sound and instantly you'd think of a company? So we give it a go. Ready? What you have just heard is known as a musical sting or an audio logo, and that is probably the most famous example of them all. Now the thing is, I don't really know what Intel does. They make computer chips, I know that, but I don't really know what computer chips are or do, so as I said, I don't really know what uh, Intel does. But like you, um, I'm guessing that you know the Intel sound. This is called audio or sonic branding, and although it's been around for a while, it isn't actually that well known a marketing technique. Audio branding has been used by some of the largest companies in the world for some time. They've worked out that getting people to associate a sound or short piece of music can have a similar effect to visual branding. For example, if I said, what sound would you associate with McDonald's? I'm guessing it would be this. Some brands go further than just a jingle and create a whole brand audio set of guidelines for their product. An ice cold Coca-Cola has been and always will be a multi-sensory experience. In fact, Coca-Cola has an entire soundscape of sounds. Fizzy drinks companies spend a lot of time and effort on their sonic brands, creating noises that they hope will elicit particular feelings and emotions in their customers. Some audio branding goes further and becomes almost part of the branding of the customers of the product themselves. Here's one for you. I'm gonna play you a sound and I'd like you to imagine the type of person who owns a product from this company. The really clever bit about that last sound is that some of you might not even have ever heard it before. It's like Apple are using that sound almost like a badge of honor. But let's not diss Microsoft here because their Windows 95 music was composed by Brian Eno, and that's kind of cool actually. The biggest compliment is always imitation, so I was so chuffed when I discovered this Japanese a cappella band covering the Sonic logo of Windows XP. And the more you look for them, the more you'll find them everywhere. I like that last one because that piece of music, Zadok the Priest by uh, George Friedrich Handel, was composed for the coronation of George II of England and has been used in every coronation since. But these days it is far better known as being the music from the Champions League, which is why I'm willing to bet that when King Charles III is crowned, scores of footy fans around the world will be saying, it's the music from the football. As a musician myself, I actually quite like musical stings and audio branding. I've even got one for this channel. So imagine my delight when I was watching TV and this gem came on the screen. This is an advert for the guide dog. It's a lovely advert with a girl playing football and constantly shouting at her dad on the sidelines about what's happening in the game, almost like a football commentator. The advert then has a big reveal that her dad is blind and she's been shouting out what she's been doing in the game so he can follow the game. It's a beautiful charity advert, and if I'm honest, a benchmark for all other charity adverts. Anyway, I digress, because at the very end of the advert, we get this. Guide dogs. A musical sting, a charity using audio branding. It's a simple refrain with only five notes, starting with G, uh, then to an E, then C, D, back to an E, and then finishing on A. Guide dogs. It's only been used by the charity in the past 12 months, but already there are a couple of variations of it. There is the more staccato version. 
And in recent weeks, they have had a new set of adverts discussing a different part of their charity, the children's services work. And with this advert, there is a far softer version of the Sonic logo. Guide dogs. It's like different parts of the charity are represented with different styles of Sonic logo and We've audio branding. Sponsoring puppies seems to have uh, the softer anything. Sonic logo. Guide dogs. Whereas the Guide Dogs Charity Lottery has the staccato version, maybe in keeping with the upbeat nature of their charity lottery branding. The only other example I can think of of audio branding for a charity is Childline. When it was first launched by Esther Ranson in 1986, it launched with an advert on television in which a young girl and a young boy snuck out of their house to a phone box to call Childline. And to embed the free phone number in children's heads, the number had a catchy jingle to it. Childline, for children in trouble or danger. Right from the start of Childline adverts, uh, they made a connection between a sound and a brand. Although I would be surprised if the producers of that first advert actually considered it as audio branding or a Sonic logo. So is the Sonic logo or audio branding something that we can expect other charities to start to use? Well, why not? Innovation, after all, is 90% stealing things. I would expect other charities with heavy TV and radio presence to start experimenting with Sonic logos and audio branding. Will we see the Ramblers come up with a Sonic logo? Ramblers. Are there any downsides to a Sonic logo? I guess if it is too annoying it could be ridiculed. That actually became part of comedy culture in the early 2000s. Hello! Yep, I'm in a bookshop! Yeah, just having a look at some books, yeah! But if I'm honest, I don't think Trigger Happy TV did knock you any harm. It might have even done them some good. In 2010, at the height of Nokia's dominance of the mobile phone market, that Nokia theme was being played 1.8 billion times a day around the world. Shame for composer Francisco Toyaga's descendants that his song Grand Valve was all out of copyright in 2010. Otherwise, it'd easily be the richest people on earth. I can't actually imagine the Guide Dog Sonic logo becoming annoying. They're unlikely to have enough exposure or airtime for it to be as remembered as others. But it could become a permanent feature on their adverts. I do hope so, actually. I wonder if it has more traction on radio, though. There are plenty of people who listen to radio on a regular basis. Classic FM, Kiss and Magic have between them about 12 and a half million listeners each week. And radio is all about audio branding. Will we see more variants of it in Guide Dogs adverts, maybe for different products and services they're promoting? And will we see more charities create their own audio brands and Sonic logos? If you've enjoyed this episode of Fundraising Tube, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the notifications button if you'd like to be informed every time I post a new video.